hey buddies how are you all doing hope you all are in best of your health a very warm welcome to all my students to this the summary series so today a new chapter we are going to start which is your evolution yes i i said your evolution we'll be talking about not only your evolution we'll be talking about our evolution so uh before proceeding towards this session i would like to share uh, something with you like whenever we run behind success every day it is like we are contributing and uh, because we want to attain good marks in our examination or let's say the neat examination so that is our target and we believe that once we will be once we'll be having good marks in a class 12 once we are having uh, a good uh, um, like a seat is there one one once we have a seat in one of the medical college so that means that we consider that it's a success but success is a never ending process it is like it's a journey success is not a destination success is a journey so by contributing every day in the path of success definitely one day you will get what you actually desire so success means if i have to tell you the exact definition of success success means suppose i have i'll be talking in your terms suppose i have a particular target which i have to attain today let's say i have to do only one chapter so you are if you have done that that means a good day that means you are successful in that second day you will set another target and that you will accomplish suppose that also you accomplish so that will be the second day of the success so like this like this the whole journey so ultimately success will lead to the exact def- destination where you want to be so vaise well, like uh, uh, like throughout the life you will be setting different targets this is what i want and just work really very hard towards that uh, destination so hoping uh, uh, like giving good vibes to all my students let's start this session evolution okay first introduction so whenever we talk about evolution evolution evolve evolve me origin origin of life if i talk about the life life originated around millions of years back and today we have a modern organism with us and na- at this point also we are not at a particular destination we are still evolving still changes are happening uh even at the micro level in our body changes every day is happening but the consequence of this this change will be seen in another uh, 100 million years or let's say 200 million years uh, uh, after where will there will be another species better than human being so this is what we call it as evolution evolution so what is a evolution will be doing all the uh, your uh, the lines which are there in the ncert it's a branch of science for the study of so i talk about the evolutionary biology evolutionary biology is a branch of biology where we talk about the origin of life how the different forms of the life they are evolved right because the uh, organisms which are present today they were uh, they are uh, they are evolved it's not the case that from 1 million years back they were present as such there is a sudden eruption of these species no with time there is a evolution and to study that process of evolution that comes under one of the field of biology which is termed as a evolutionary biology the branch of life science for the study of origin of life and evolution of different forms of life on earth was called as bio or evolutionary biology by mayer 70 then okay let's talk about the origin of life so earth very old but it is considered that by looking at the different evidences we know that first life evolved around 3800 4200 million back so this is not a day story this is a huge like this itself is a journey so today if i talk about the life if i talk about this life which i am trying to tell you 3800 years back or 4200 years back billions years back your guys i am talking about the life so life means the cell a living cell so living cell arise at this particular time now let's go into the origin of life so 
before talking about the origin of life detail that how the different life form exist first i would like to discuss with you how this formation of earth occur right initially yes with evidences with the different kind of evidence but to know that earth was not as it is present today it it was something else let's talk about it now it is said that the universe originated around 20 billions years ago here one theory uh, uh, like said this one theory state this uh, the uh, this particular thing that when we talk about the universe universe is formed because of a big explosion so huge explosion happened which beautifully written in a big bang theory where the big bang theory have you heard of big bang theory the big bang theory gives us an idea that how the universe it clear now this is 20 billions years ago but about the earth earth was formed around 4.5 billion years ago now there was no atmosphere at that particular time there was no atmosphere on early earth water vapor some water vapor water was present in the form of vapor the temperature was high and in fact the lightning thundering activity was in the environment in the air the methane was there carbon dioxide was there the ammonia was there which was released from the molten mass covered on the earth surface because the temperature was very high now uv rays yes from the sun uv rays they were directly coming on the earth surface and how because here the ozone was not present 4.5 billion years ago ozone was not present. uv rays they were directly penetrating on the earth surface because of the uv rays the they broke up water into the h2 and o right this cause uv rays helps in this breakdown <coughs> h2 being lighter escapes what is left oxygen with time this oxygen oxygen combined with the ammonia and methane and what they formed is the water and the carbon dioxide so they form the water and the carbon dioxide with time this uh, water was present in the form of vapors the temperature it took years the temperature cooled down yes the temperature comes down and ultimately what happens is what happens is the water vapor fell as a rain the form and they form the ocean are you getting this point so ultimately we have the ocean because this rainfall was not only for one day or the two day this happened for years due to which the ocean formation occur done now the similarly because of the oxygen formation the oxygen oxygen formed the ozone layer ozone layer also started form right are you getting this point so this was a sequential process which happened one after the another life appeared almost 500 million after the formation once the earth was formed later on after 500 million years ago life so how did we got to know about the existence of the life how do we know that this is was the particular time when life was present by looking at the evidences which we discussed so <coughs> this was a big bang theory it was proposed by the abbe lamettare according to this theory the universe originated around 50 billion years ago. origin of earth 4.5 billion ago life on the earth is 5 4 billion done clear let's talk about the origin of life right whatever data i have buddies all these data they are directly for ncr origin of life different theories came and different theories talked about how life came to earth the first theory was the theory of the special creation. special creation said that this was given by the father so he said that earth formed or the different life formed on the earth's sur surface because of the god yes even in hindu mythology it is written that this is the brahma ji there was a, the the god brahma ji he formed formed the whole brahmand so this was the special creation theory and they said that the life which exists today they were same which existed at the time of the origin that is 4 uh, billion millions years uh, back now second theory is cosmos Cosmos theory was given by the Richter, and according to the life, 
from x y z or d so from x y z in the form of the uh, they came here in the uh, some catastrophic activity happened that means some other planet is having life the spores came on the earth surface and the life form this was a theory which, which was given by the richter another theory is theory of the spontaneous generation it is also termed as a abiogenesis or autogenesis or supported by the greek philosopher thales anaximander zeno plato empedocles and the aristotle this states that <coughs> now now this states that life came out of the decaying or the rotting material like straw mud etc what is this biogen that means the life on this earth surface they are formed from the uh, non living substances some non living substances was, was there and because of these non living substances the life right for example it is said that because of the straw because of the mud the life was later on louis pasteur another scientist he demonstrated that life comes from pre existing life and disproved they said that life can only form the life life can only form the life and he did one experiment also will not go into detail because there are some reasons now another theory came the theory of biogen three scientists came francisco reddy lazaro splenzini and louis pasteur separately all of them did the uh, different kind of experiment and with that we got to know this the life came from the pre existing life here you remember the s shaped experiment that was done by the uh, louis pasteur own moving on to the next is the modern theory the modern theory today we have is the chemical theory of origin of life the most accepted theory this theory was proposed by operin and haldane yes so operin and haldane they were two different scientists and they both were uh, indian scientists they are basically indian scientists and they are uh, england born uh, scientists here now they published his book origin of life in 1938 right proposed by the operin and haldane now this theory state that the first form of life was originated from the non living or inorganic substance they said origin was abiogenetic they supported the theory of abiogenesis but later on they said later on the uh, formation of life occurs from life initially it was the inorganic substances these inorganic substances leads to the formation of organic substances from living cells and these living cells give rise to the another living this was their theory here now organic molecules such as methane ammonia water sugar proteic acid etc so they said that life was formed abiogenesis first first there is a abiogenesis but the biogenesis ever since question which was asked in all india pm 2007 very very important here yeah. so many time or uh, many times to see come to know um, this modern theory this chemical theory of origin of uh, which is uh, given by the operin and haldane they support the idea of abiogen and they disprove the idea of biogenesis no it is not the case in fact this theory supports the idea of abiogenesis and later on the biogenesis also so both these concepts they are they were collaborated in the chemical theory origin of but this theory was uh, experimentally proved by another scientist let's have a look now this was the experiment i'll show yes this was the experiment experiment was given by miller and urey another two scientists they did this experiment they wanted to prove the theory chemical origin of life this particular theory in the form of an experiment this was their whole experiment setup first i'll be explaining you this diagram given in your ncert and then we will be proceeding further right so this was the whole setup there was two different flask one is a small flask where water was boiling so that we have to maintain the temperature higher temperature the reason higher temperature because in prevailing in the previous environment the temperature was quite high here the water was boiling here another flask was there 
another flask you will find the electrodes are present and these two electrodes will produce sparks because as i have discussed earlier these electrodes they were producing uh, because at that particular time during uh, the previous time there were lightning and the thundering activity so because of this electrode the spark discharge was created here the mixture of gases was taken which is ethane ammonia water and h2 now here later on see gases were present here definitely the gases they will condense <coughs> we have to condense the gases here the condenser was attached so that the gases can be condensed and the liquid is extracted with the help of this tap and this was collected here and they got to know that this liquid contains some organic substances some inorganic substances some organic substances amino acids were was also seen the amino acids which were present here was aag a a g i'll tell you about it so here the vacuum pump was also attached because prevailing at that particular time the environment was reducing stable can see oxygen are we haven't added so this experiment they carried out for this let's have a quick read they created a condition like that of a primitive earth that is a high temperature volcanic storm reducing environment with thin ammonia water and h yeah. they made electric discharge in a closed flask electric discharge closed flask was containing ch4 nh3 h2 water vapor uh, <coughs> water vapor at around 700 to 800 degree celsius as a result amino acids were formed gas in amino acids were formed so oh, the three amino acids they were formed by this that is alanine aspartic acid and glucose these were the three amino acids a similar experiment other observed the formation of the nitrogenous bases pigment fats sugar first non cellular form of life originated non cellular right non cellular form of life originated billion years ago and they were rna protein polysaccharide etc the life which was evolved was rna as a genetic because rna has a catalytic property also this gives us an idea that rna was genetic material in earlier cells now this was the experiment very very important uh, experiment guys it is very 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 important this diagram at least you guys should draw 3 to 4 times please so this also i can vouch here this can be asked in 3 marks or the 5 marks question directly you have to draw the miller and urey experiment very easy also and the points which we have seen in the previous slide those points you can note down depending on the question depending on the marks attributed to the question so they said the organic evolution happened they said there was a chemical evolution chemical evolution uh, chemicals were there and ultimately these chemicals which were formed they combined together and they formed the cell right this uh, experiment was supported by the um, uh, one experiment done by the miller and hure now we are talking about the organic evolution organic evolution that means existence of the different life forms different life forms see we talked about a single cell that cell was formed where the rna is a genetic material but now we are having millions of species and they are very much different other so just to uh, get us an idea we want to get that idea that how these cells they were prevailing so ncert talks about some evidences so with the help of certain evidences we get get these ideas that these were the uh, were present earlier this were the species which were present in the mid time this were present now there were certain evidences first is a fossil evidence which is from the paleontological evidence second by comparative anatomy and morphology physiological evidence biogeographical embryological e evidence these were the different five evidences by which the uh, uh, you know scientists they got to know that this species the species first let's talk about the paleontological evidence significance of fossils no now let's talk about the paleontology paleontology is a study of fossils So fossils these are the cast or the remains of the earlier organism sometimes it can be the coprolite type of fossils also for example the waste of the feces of the earlier organism that also comes under the paleontological evidences 
Now, what is the significance of the fossils? Now, to study phylogeny, evolutionary history or the race history. Yes, this is important for the study of the evolutionary history. Like suppose a very good evolutionary history is given with respect to the horse. How today we have a modern horse with us, but the horse which used to exist, which were present in earlier time, they were of the uh, short height, just like that of a fox, with time evolution happened. And that evolution we noticed only because of the paleontological evidence. Now, to study the connecting link between the two groups of organisms, for example, the Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is a connecting link. Archaeopteryx are the kind of, are the dinosaurs who can fly. So, they are the connecting link between the birds and the reptiles. So, by looking at their fossils, we got to know that they are having wing. They are having spine bodies. That means, somewhere or other, these reptiles, they are related to the birds. To study about the extinct animals, for example, the dinosaurs. Okay, we know about dinosaurs. You all must have seen Jurassic Park movie. So, how did we got to know about the, uh, these organisms, the huge organisms? This is because of their fossils. Today, uh, to study about the geological period by analyzing fossils in different sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are the different layers, where the different layers of the rocks are present. By looking at the age of the rock, we can get to know that this organism was present in this particular era or epoch. See yeah. Now, the study shows that the life form varied over time and certain life forms are restricted to certain geological times. Now, right? For certain, uh, for example, the dinosaur, dinosaur was one era, and later on, because of it is considered because of the catastrophic activities, they are go went gone. And now we have animals bigger than dinosaur. What is that? Humans bigger? Sure. I'm not talking about the uh, bigger as compared, uh, like if I talk about the body. Now, moving on to the next is second evidence is comparative. That means that the internal structure. <coughs> so the first given in your NCRT is a homology. Homology common origin, similar basic plant and embryonic development. But function now homology means suppose we have a two individuals at our home. Let's talk about my but I'm just giving one example how to remember. So homology means Organisms, they are having, with time, they are exposed to different environmental their function. Very simple uh, example I am giving. In our whole family, what is my name? My Kavi Jatwani. My family of Jatwani people, there are five members. Five members are there. Now, we have a small family. Five total members are there. Each person is, involved, is doing a particular function. I am a teacher, my sister is something else, and my brother is something else. So, this difference, we have a common heritage, so this is termed as homology. Homology means are having siblings, they look alike, they are they're having common embryonic development, they, but their function is different when we talk about the. Here, I'll t uh, two examples are given in study. The first is these two. Here, the, this is given with respect to the plant. These examples, guys, you have. So, what is this? Here, buddies, here, buddies, the two axillary buds modification are given. The first is termed as thorns. Thorns are also auxiliary bud modification. Another auxiliary bud modification, the tendrils. Now, if you look at these two, these are the modification, right? But the thorns is the one which helps in protection. Whereas uh, tendrils, they help in the uh, uh, support. They basically provide. Right? Now the next is an example of the homologous organ. Another example of the homologous organ. Another example of homologous organ is this one. Here, the homologous organs, in case of the plants and the animals, uh, in case of the animals, they are being given. So if you look at their four arms, structure somehow is same. Here they are having humerus, reed. Ulna, carpals, metacarpals, everything. Everything. This is a humerus radius ulna, humerus radius ulna, humerus radius ulna, humerus radius ulna. So, the structure is somehow similar, but the function is different. Forearm function is 
this everything whatever we do that is because of the hand suit kita it is for running for the veil it is for swimming for the bat it is for hanging right it provides them support so they are having different kind of function right but their origin are is the same because here buddies we are talking about the mammals only mammals common group common origin but the function okay going on to the next is analog analogy we are talking about the organ on or having the similar function these organs organs they are having the similar function but their origin is different the term does analogy or the analogous organ it based on the similar function or organ organs which have different origin dissimilar fundamental structure but have a similar function the analog different examples are given just have a look let me drink some water guys so yes if i talk about the examples eyes of octopus and of mammals so eyes of octopus if you look at the structure of the eyes of octopus and the mammal they are very other structure is not similar structure and they are not common right the octopus is something else and this one is something else right mammals here one on one side we are talking about the mammals so either when you compare other mollusks also with the mammals you will see the huge difference is there structure wise difference is there but the function is same that is vision it helps in providing the vision next is flippers of penguins and the dolphins penguins and the dolphin the function is they help in the swimming sweet potato and the potato the function is they help in the the food whereas a sweet potato is your root modification the, uh, the normal potato is the uh, root sorry stem modification right done <coughs> now let's come back to this homology homology organism belonging to the common origin but they show difference in the function this is beautifully given in divergent this kind of evolution this group of organs a divergent evolution divergent evolution. getting this point the divergent they are diverging diverge whereas the analogy which we have studied your analogy which we have studied so the here the organism different organisms are there the origin is different but they are having the common function so this gives us a kind of evolution convert convergent evolution correct next is a biochemical evidences organism which show similarity in the protein in the other biomolecules and metabolism it indicates the common history for example atp for the rubisco if these are same in different group of organ that means somehow similarity exists now embryological evidence next evidence is embryological evidence proposed by the ernest heckel very important ernest now what is this e embryological evidence is all about so he said that he observed that all the vertebrate embryos they have a common feature that are absent in others the indian fish amphibian reptiles and the mammals at one particular stage all of them they are similar they are chordates so they are similar to each other they look alike so that means this gives us an idea that all of them they are evolved from each other this was seen by the ernest for example all vertebrate embryo including human develop vestigial gill slit just behind the head here the vestigial gill slits are present though in case of adults see uh, when a child is there in a mother's womb in embryonic stages the gill slits are present now these gill slits they are absent in case of adult but yes they remain in case of fish but embryonic stages of fishes amphibian reptiles and the mammals they look similar all of them they will be having the post anal tail we don't have a post anal tail in adult 
But in embryonic stage, we have a post-anal tail. Similarly, the fishes, if you look at their embryo, the post-anal tail is present. So everything is. But it's function only in fish, not found in. However, Carl Ernst von Baer rejected the proposal. This was asked in paper. He noted that the embryos never pass through the adult stage of another end. Now, this was the statement which was given by the von Baer. So, what did, what did he say? He said that embryos never pass through the adult stage of another animal. <coughs> another evidence was given from the biogeography. Biogeography, that means different geographical area where they are present this also gives us an let's have a look the first experiment first uh, example sorry which was given with respect to the biological evidence was this these are the darwin finches darwin finch is a kind of a bird when darwin was on his voyage so some birds are there whom he called them darwin finches so they, he saw that the finches, they are very much similar to each other because they have a common parent species. But the difference is with respect to their feeding habitat. And on the basis of the different feeding habitat, they have a different beak size and shape. So original seed eating birds, they are evolved to different environmental conditions because the different conditions they were given to them. Some are evolved for seed eat, some are evolved from uh, for uh, the cactus eat, some are evolved for insect eating. So, like this, the modification with time happened in their beak sizes and shape. Darwin finches, beautiful example. Another example was, was given with respect to the marsupials in all. Now, marsupials, a common category, marsupials, but the different marsupials are there. So, they are radiating from a point. Clear? So, here the Tasmanian wolf, tiger cat, banded anteater, marsupial rat, we have a wombat, kangaroo, bandicoot, koala, marsupial mole, the sugar gliders. All these are the marsupials only. So different At a one particular area, this is at one particular geographical area, they were present, but they were exposed to different environmental conditions. So they evolved accordingly. Now, there is another experiment given. With another sorry example given with respect to the placental mammal. This was the Australian marsupials, guys. Marsupial mole, numbat, marsupial spotted, cascus flying, phalanger, Tasmanian tiger, cat, Tasmanian wolf. Now, another very important line statement is given in your NCRT. Placental mammal in Australia also exhibits similar adaptive radiation. Now, what they saw in Australia, there are placental mammals, PM placental mammals. Right? In Australia, there are Australian marsupials also. Group of the organism. So, they also evolved in Australia. They also evolved in Australia. And it was seen that evolution was very much similar to each. Parallel evolution was seen because they were present in a similar geographical area that is the Australia. Also exhibit the adapt adaptive radiation evolving into different variety of such placental mammals, each of which appear to be similar to correspond. Now they saw this was a kind of evolution happened. This was another kind of evolution which was there. They saw that mole was very much similar to the marsupial mole. Anteater was very much similar to the nimbet of the anteater. Mouse was similar to the marsupial mouse. Lemur was similar to the casket, <coughs> spotted cascus. Flying school, squirrel, flying phalanger. The bobcat, Tasmanian tiger cat. Wolf was similar to the Tasmanian. So, parallel evolution was seen of the placental mammals and Australian marsupials. Now, another evidence was also given. Evidences of evolution by the natural selection. What was this? Natural selection is a process by which organisms that are best suited for their environment survive, reproduce. Some evidences I'll, I'll show you. I've given below. Now, there are, uh, I have that on the Very important that experiment was. It was like those who are best, best suited, natural selection selected by nature because they were best suited individuals. 
best suited individuals they are always selected by the niche whereas those which are not suited those which are not showing the adaptation which were not showing the adaptation they will be eliminated by the niche but nature always maintains the variation that means different individuals are present those number those individuals will be having higher number who are having better suitability to the environment whereas others will be having less in more. this was given by in natural selection what was this and in this the one example was given super duper important that is that is the industrial melanin industrial melanin first before industrialized there were more white winged moth on the tree then dark wind, winged moth so there were different species one species is the biston bitularia and biston carbonaria two different species are there bitularia next one is biston carbonaria two different species of the moth are present are the moth different species if you look at these these are the light in color and these are the dark in color now it is said that before industrialization because the tree was covered with lichens so there were more white winged moth so that they can easily blend because the stem was also white in color because of the lichen there at that particular time the carbonaria the dark one were also present but they were less in number because the predator used to uh, kill them right then the dark color melanized moth after industrialization the more dark wing moth and the less wing moth was observed because after industrialization the lichen disappeared lichen disappeared so that stem was dark carbonaria survived the dark color survived as come the right now the reason look at the reason there was a white lichen covered the tree in that the back background white winged moth which is the biston bitularia survived but the dark winged moth which is the biston carbonaria they were picked up by the predator yes super duper the reason why I, ha i have written answer because many time this has been asked paper you should write the things as such after industrialization the tree trunk became dark due to industrial smoke and soot right and the lichens they died no growth of the lichens because the lichens they are the bio indicator under these conditions the white colored moth did not survive because they pre the predator they were killing it identified them easily dark moth survived because of the suitable dark color background this was asked yeah the next <coughs> another topic which is given in your uh, ncert is the theories of evolution so two primarily the two important theories so we saw that different uh, chemical if first we saw the chemical evolution happened and that chemical evolution was because of the inorganic substances and that inorganic substances the organic substances present on the earth sir can clear the organic substances forms the cell now the cell which was present now converted into millions of organisms which exist today so how this diversification happened how this evolution happened let's take an example of a horse earlier horse were of the height of a fox now the of a horse size is bigger as compared to a fox size with time evolution happened so the question was why this evolution happened what was the reason behind it why the size keep on increasing what was the use of that for this particular experiment two scientists came one of that scientist was a lemark so lemar gave us the idea of lemarkism he gave the theory of inheritance of acquired character he said whatever we acquire during our lifetime they are inherited they are inherited from one generation to another whatever changes i am going to do in my life that changes will definitely go to my uh, daughter or the son whosoever now 
theory of inheritance of acquired character is a first theory of organic evolution proposed by the Jan Baptiste de Lamarck, 1744 to 1820. Basic concept, he said, internal vital force that means each and every individual exists on the earth surface. Our internal vital force they have some kind of requirement. That requirement is affected by the environment. I'll give you example also and the new. <coughs> suppose internal vital force suppose i want to go to gym because i want to develop my muscle i have that uh, zeal i have that dream that is my internal vital force next is and that also i can do next is effect of environment and new with time yes i saw a gym is there near me i can easily go to the gym and i can do the workout that is my new Use and disuse of the organ. Then what will I do? I'll go and I will, uh, you know, weights. I'll go for weights. Now, what will happen? Inheritance of acquired character. This theory. If I am a body builder, if I am developing some muscles, my child will be having same kind of muscle. But they said all these factors are important. But yes. inheritance all the inherited characters they are not acquired only those genes there in my germ cells they will be acquired rest all will not acquire this was the theory the um, example which they decided the example which they used for the explanation was the giraffe they saw they said that earlier giraffe they were having short neck they were roaming around and suddenly they that all the green leaves they are vanished what they did they stretched their neck they stretched their neck so that they can have the leaf stretch their neck more and more and more with time there is more formation more uh, length of the neck the future this was his explanation because the giraffe wanted to have long neck because is uh, because they want to feed on the fresh leaf this was the given internal vital force then the use and disuse of organ and ultimately the inheritance of acquired character now another scientist came said no 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 it is not the case he came and he gave the concept of darwinism darwinism said there is a theory darwin darwinism that yahan pe there is a concept of natural so natural selection he gave the theory of natural selection his full name for charles darwin and another scientist r w w both of them they worked independently and they gave us the idea of the they said that each and every individual present on the earth crust have a capacity of right all the organism present on the earth crust they reproduce and they want to attain the biotic potential maximum number of individuals all of them they will fight to all of them they will fight with each for this existence there will be struggles of ex there will be variation in heredity if i ha i am having six kids if i am having six kids all six variations are always present the survival of the fittest only those of will, uh, will survive who are best adapted to the then there is origin of new now this is same thing i am going to explain you with the help of this experiment though this experiment was taken now the lemarkism said with time giraffe wanted to have long neck so that they can feed on the fresh leaves of the plants <coughs> because the leaves of the tree be present at the good height they wanted to have a big uh, neck they wanted to go for it and they had it that's it now second thing is the, the second concept given by the da darwinism darwin said that when we talk about the giraffe species there are lot of giraffe some are having good height some are having short neck everything was present with time fresh leaves vanished fresh leaves were present on the which were present near to the ground they vanished so the giraffe who were having short neck variation was already there they died because they didn't get the food those who were having the long neck they survived 
बिकॉज दे सर्वाइव दे रिप्रोड्यूस दे रिप्रोड्यूस दैट मीन्स दिस गेव बर्थ टू द बेबी इज हैविंग द लॉन्ग नेक दिस वॉज अ कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज बाई द डार्विन दिस इज द डिफरेंस योर द नीड इज नॉट देयर योर दे टॉक्ड अबाउट द नेचुरल सिलेक्शन डार्विन टॉक्ड अबाउट द वेरिएशन एंड द नेचुरल सिलेक्शन your why talk about the darwinism darwin gave us the idea or theories of the natural selection we'll be discussing about this detail first let's not talk about it wait for some time i'll explain you this so another theory ki this theory was given as mutation third theory also related to the organic evolution i'll be explain the natural selection now the mutation theory was put forward in 9 by hugh devry he worked on oenothera nemark which is a evening primrose and believed that evolution take place through the mutation by the mind now when darwin was working darwin gave us the idea of variation variation changes among the uh, different group of organ he talked about the variation at right? the variation variation he explained the variation that variation comes from okay done another scientist came scientist said that if i talk about me because germ cells are formed by the me then eggs are formed is not the only reason the not the only variation he gave another con he said it is the mutation he said it mutation or mutation sudden change because of any mutation sudden change in the gene now he said darwin variation they are very small minor and direction right it happens like definitely the mother will give birth to the another baby there will be change, another change was a kind of a direction due to this the gradual evolution can occur he said mutation is sudden sudden mutation random directional as mutation Here the speciation is saltation, sudden change, sudden change. Uh, for example, some mutation happened, and because of this, the uh, these type of individuals they are produced. Must have seen Hollywood movie where the mutation is there. They talked about he talked about those sudden change the DNA. There is formation of a new the formation term that's the species. he explained the saltation concept what is the saltation a single large step mutation is now next is mutation is the origin of variation for the evolution this was given by the mutation the mutation by the hugo defrey right <coughs> now we have to talk about the theory now the natural selection Darwin used the this word natural selection again and again. Darwin said natural selection or nature selects the best. Keeping this thing in mind that variation be there in the nature. Here, this natural selection was best explained by this particular. What is this graph about? Now, this is the original population. In this original population, we'll see the lots of individuals they are present. some are white or the light in color some are dark colored dark mean their coat color is dark right so they saw the variation there there are some individuals who are medium there are some medium color individuals some are very less are dark and very less are the albino kind of are there now he said that natural selection will select certain kind of individual teacher will select certain kind of individual now listen very carefully suppose nature selects only dark colored one right suppose nature selects only dark colored one this term that's a directional select when nature selects only the albino either albino or the dark color one this will be termed as the diversifying selection earlier it is directional selection diversifying selection and if they are only selecting the medium individual which are of medium coat color they are selected that will be termed as stabilizing selection 
so depending upon the different environmental ne nature selects a particular individual when they select only one kind of individuals it will be termed as the directional selection when they select two extreme kind of varieties that will be termed as the disruptive one when they select the medium individuals that will be termed as a stabilizing selection this was given in the natural selection so later on it was uh, in a very good way this was explained. now we have learned the theories behind the evolution now another thing which is mentioned in your ncrt regarding the evolution of the plants and animals. this was the graph which is this is sort of illustration type of thing so it is said that chlorophytes they were considered as an ancestor chlorophytes later on later on give rise to the bryophyte so the bryophyte chlorophyte ancestors they are the so they are evolved from the chlorophyte ancestors going on to the next is terakiophytes ancestor they gave rise to the herbaceous lycopods right they gave rise to herbaceous lycopods they gave rise to deuterophyllum and herbaceous lycopods now the next is the xylophyton xylophyton give rise to phenopsids they gave rise to ferns ginkgo conifers cycads the dicots monocots etc first you have to remember that these are the ancestors of this particular species particular group of the plants which exist to here yeah. so basically you have to remember for the chlorophytes you have to remember for the tracheophytes and the xylophytes this is how they are evolved so it took see years millions of years see it started with the siluri and now we have a uh, now moving to the the quaternary or the tertiary uh, this one <coughs> cenozoic right so here so it took years lot of time same thing was mentioned for the animals or now what is this it is said that earlier uh, reptiles earlier reptiles they were present now sauropods sorop they are considered as the ancestor of the turtles sauropods also give rise to the lizards snakes it also give rise to the uh, the crocodiles etc the birds everything whereas the synapsids uh, synap synapsids they are the ancestor of the mammal like this the evolution is the different group of organism they gave rise to different uh, 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 the ex animals which exist today given by this particular uh, illustration <coughs> so what it gives us it gives us this data now 500 million years ago invertebrates were formed 350 million ago jawless fish were formed 320 seaweeds and the few plants were formed. 350 million ago fish with stout and a strong fin moved on to the land and go back to the water low fin fish the coleocanth was found in south africa in 1938 low fin formed the amphibian amphibian evolved into the reptiles dinosaur disappeared 65 million these were the data these are the actually the data given in that is for all these otherwise in the detail session in the sum, uh, this is just a summary session in detail session definitely will be discussing all these things in deep now moving on to the next is evolution of today we have a man a modern man with a good cranial capacity and the bipedal locomotion but they were they are not as such they like if i talk about the 50 years ago these organisms they were something else with time evolution for example 15 million year ago dryopithecus and the ramapithecus were present they were hairy Dryopithecus, they were more ape-like. Ramapithecus, they were more human-like. They walked like gorillas, chimpanzees. Very important. Dryopithecus, they were the ape-like. Whereas the Ramapithecus, they were the man-like. That's the neat. Also, three to four year million year ago, man-like primates, height up to four feet. Fossils of the man-like bones found in Ethiopia and Tanzania. Two million year ago, Australopithecus came to live in the east african grassland hunted with stone weapons and they used to fruits only by looking at their dentition what to know that these organisms they used to then came the homo habilis homo habilis they were the first human like being then came the homo erectus which were having a good brain capacity of around 900 cc 
next 1 lakh to 40000 years ago there was a homo neanderthals whose brain, brain capacity was around 1400 cc lived in east and central asia used i protect their body buried their de uh, dead they were more civilized guys neanderthals they were civilized 17000 75000 to 10000 years homo sapiens came prehistoric cave are developed about years ago agriculture settlement everything was done by the homo this is how they evolved starting from the dryopithecus to the ramapithecus and have a modern man us to the different important features the like uh moving on to burying the organism done by the neanderthals to those uh, organisms which are uh, which uh, which were which used to believe in agriculture which actually which now also they believe in agriculture and the settlement that is the homo sapiens so these were the different group of organisms they were present right so this is all about the summaries of the summaries of this lecture that is the human uh, uh, evolution sorry the total evolution where we talked about the theories the evidences the uh, you know the idea behind the evolution and then ultimately we talked about the different eras and epochs where the organism they are evolved and ultimately the human evolution so guys this is all about the today's session see you in the next session where we will be discussing more have a nice day bye bye